Friday is complicated. <laughs> Good Friday is the, uh, the day, the one day in the church calendar that we set aside for uh, remembering the death of Jesus. Not his death and resurrection, just his death. To remember a terrible, terrible day, to try to honor that loss and that sacrifice and and the horror that it must have been for the people who actually experienced it. But we struggle with that, as I think especially as evangelicals with our history. I think we always want to jump ahead to Easter Sunday. We want to click on the button on the progress bar and just drag it all the way across through Saturday to Sunday morning right there because that is the good news that we know is coming. So we struggle with that. We, uh, we, stumble over, um, we stumble over our perspective because we do know what happens on Sunday. We stumble over our um, objectivity simply because we can't experience what John and, and Peter and Mary and Mary and all the rest did experience that day. We cannot walk this day in their shoes, no matter how hard we try, because this is something that happened to somebody else. We can try to empathize, but we can't experience it the way they did. And it's not like our situation now. Right now, we are in a situation with the pandemic where we're, we're waiting we're waiting for the pattern of infection to run its course and waiting for science to find a cure or an inoculation. And we know that that's going to happen. We expect that to happen. It's just a matter of being patient and waiting. But John and Peter and Mary and Mary and the rest, they were not waiting. They had nothing to wait for because it was over. They had no expectancy, no anticipation. They weren't being patient because there was nothing to come. Another thing we stumble over, and if I'm honest with myself, I don't want to experience what they experienced. No matter how much Jesus means to me, no matter the, the impact that his death had on my life, no matter how great a gift that was, I don't want to feel what those people felt. I don't want to go through what they went through. I, um, I have a quote from a book, Leslie Newbigin. He wrote this. This is amazing. The first commentary on the death of Jesus, the first thing anybody had to say about the death of Jesus was the suicide of Judas. If the cross were the last word in God's self-revelation, then this first commentary would be the only possible one. If all humankind, even its best representatives, is exposed here as one murderous treason against its creator, what future is there but death? What is the point of continuing this futile saga of sin, even with all the adornments of civilization, 
If the cross is the end, then there is no future. So what do we do with Good Friday? I find it helpful to, uh, to come to the day with one simple, clear focus, one clear understanding, not focusing on the when or the where or the what or the how or even the why, but to focus simply on Jesus. Jesus, the man who lived his life and died his death for us and for all of this world. Jesus, our God, who came to find us so that we could be with him. Jesus, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for everything was created by him in heaven and earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile everything to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Once we were alienated and hostile in our minds because of our evil actions, but now, now he has reconciled us by his physical body through his death to present us holy and faultless and blameless before him. I'm going to go to the piano and sing a song. And uh, I hope that you will click on the link that will be up here. That'll take you to the video. And whether you sing along with this wonderful hymn or just listen, take the time to listen in your own heart and in your own mind for whatever it is that Jesus has to say to you today.